بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم وفقني لما تحبه وترضى استخدمنا لدينك ورفع راية نبيك علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah and brothers and sisters I ask Allah Azza wa Jal the one that he gathered the seed tonight and because of him we gathered here tonight to make us from amongst those who he gathers under his throne under his shade when there's no shade except his shade in the hereafter, Amin. The day of judgment and the signs of the day of judgment and what happens on the day of judgment and where is the final destination of each person on the day of judgment. This is the series that we are in and this is the series that we are talking about and they are, this is the series that we are ending, inshaAllah. Death and the hereafter. And we spoke about what happens just before death and during death and after death. And then we spoke about the minor signs of the day of judgment. And last I stopped with you on the major signs of the day of judgment. And I began with the first major sign of the day of judgment and that was the Dajjal, Antichrist. Uh, we mentioned the famous hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says narrated by Hudayfa ibn Usaid al-Ghafari where he says we were gathered together in the mosque of Allah azza wa jal in the mosque in the masjid while we are discussing while we are discussing some of the affairs of Islam so Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes in while we are in our discussing some of of Islam what happens in the hereafter, what happens before the day of judgment and so on. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathering and he said, what are you talking about? What are you discussing? So they said, our oh, messenger of Allah, we are discussing about the What happens on the day of judgment? And the day of Allah is the day of judgment. And what's before the day of judgment? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, well, the day of judgment would not take place. The day of judgment would not take place until 10 major signs appear. So there are 10 major signs before the appearance or before the day of judgment. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam starts to mention them. And then he says, number one he mentioned, which is not in order, but that's why he mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith. He says, ad-dukhan, which is a smoke that we'll talk about inshallah later on. Ad Dajjal, Antichrist or the deceiver and liar. Ad Dabba, the beast. The sun coming out of, from the west. The return of Isa, the son of Maryam. Ya'juj or Ma'juj, Gog, Magog. And three landslides one in the east, one in the west, one in the Arabian Peninsula. And a fire that will come out of Yemen in Adan that will force people to the place of resurrection. So these are 10 major signs. 10 major signs. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions those 10 major signs in this form and order, in this hadith. However, in other hadith, he mentions them in different orders. And as I mentioned to you before, those 10 signs are connected to one another. But which one comes before the other, we don't know. The only ones that we know that come before the other is that the Dajjal comes before Isa, Isa comes before Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And I began talking to you, I began talking to you and I began speaking about the Dajjal, which is one of the first, and Allah A'lam, one of the first of the major signs of the Day of Judgment. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also describes that the signs and the major signs of the Day of Judgment are connected to one another. These 10 major signs are connected to one another. If one of them appears, the rest will follow. 
if one of them appears the rest will follow not like the minor signs the minor signs are not connected to one another one could appear now one could appear later one could appear after years after centuries Allahu alam but the major signs these 10 major signs which are just before the day of judgment in other words they are on the doorstep of the day of judgment they do not they do not come and just before or they appear just before the day of judgment they are connected to one another they are connected to one another that the prophet والسلام, describes it as like beads in a string or in a cable you cut that rope you cut that string you cut that cable what happens all the beads will fall down and that's the example of the major signs of the day of judgment they are all connected to one another once one of them appears the rest will follow once one of them appears the rest will follow and once the ten of them are finished so the last major sign the tenth major sign which Allah alam which one it is but some of the scholars have their own personal reasoning and opinion on it and they say it's that it comes out of Adam and the other scholars say the sun coming out of the West that's that once the tenth sign appears know that the day of judgment is after that when we say after it by minutes by hours by days by months by years Allahu alam okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam we spoke about the Dajjal we described how the Dajjal is and who he is and what he is and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says in one of the hadith there is no fitna there is no fitna that's greater upon my nation than the fitna of the Dajjal the fitna of the Dajjal is the greatest fitna the greatest test and tribulation and corruption that will ever appear in this world even Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said every prophet and messenger warned his people from the Dajjal and I warn you from the Dajjal and I'm going to tell you more about the Dajjal than our other prophet and messenger had told his own people so sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was kind enough to tell us more about the Dajjal more about his signs more about his appearance more about his look-alike more about this and that than any other prophet and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us more about the Dajjal than any other prophet and every prophet and messenger warned his own people about the Dajjal last I mentioned to you that the Dajjal will come here 40 days in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says one of those 40 days is one year one out of those 40 days is one year another day from those 40 days is like one month and another day from those 40 days is one week and the rest of the days the rest of the days are like your days if you calculate it you'll come up to about 428 days so how long he'll be on earth 428 days 40 days in Nabi Sallallahu says one day is like so that's 355 days 355 of the solar year and one day like a month that's nine days or 30 days one day is like one week that's seven days the rest of your days which are okay days as says which Allahu alam equals up to about 15 months in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about his powers and Allah is the one that gives him those powers so the powers of the Dajjal are not his own independent powers they are powers that Allah granted him and the reason that Allah Azza wa granted him those powers so he could test the people that he will appear at their time. The fitna of the Dajjal is a big fitna, a big test, a big calamity. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to ask and seek refuge in Allah Azza wa from the Dajjal. From the Dajjal. That even once the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking about the Dajjal to the Sahaba, the Sahaba got scared that went out in the bush. In the jungle looking for him, is he there? Big fitna. He's so powerful that the Prophet والسلام, he says he has hellfire and he has paradise. But his paradise is hellfire and his fire is par uh, his paradise is hellfire and his hellfire is paradise. So if you see his hellfire, jump into it because there's gonna be paradise. What do you mean jump into it? In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he speaks about his powers. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam 
speaks about the powers of the Dajjal that Allah had given him. He says, alayhi salatu was salam, while the Dajjal is moving and traveling with his followers, and most of his followers are the Jews. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when the Dajjal comes out, he'll have over 70,000 Jews following him. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also says, they have the hoods. They've, they've got the hoods covering their heads. And most of his followers also are the magicians and fortune tellers. But he's so powerful, he's so strong, they will come up to a Bedouin and will say to him, if I bring your mother or your father back alive, would you believe in me? So he says yes. So that the Jan, with his deception and lie, will bring his mother or his father, not back alive, in the shaitan will come in the form of his mother and father. He doesn't bring them alive. But the shaitan who supports the Dajjal will come in the form of this Bedouin's mother or father and then that shaitan who is in the disguise or the look alike of his mother or father will say to him, Son, die following this man because this man is on the truth. What a fitna. What a test. What sort of iman do you have to stand against this fitna? The Dajjal will bring someone that looks like your own mother and father, the ones that you love most, who are dead. And you've been visiting their grave for many, many years. The shaitan will come in the form of your mother or your father, your dead mother or father, and say to you, O oh son, daughter, follow this man because this man is your Lord. Tell me what iman do you have to stand against this? You need iman so strong, stronger than the mountains. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to tell the companions, there is no fitna that I fear on you most than the fitna of the Dajjal. And listen to this other incident. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says, while the Dajjal is walking and traveling through the towns and the cities, He'll go past a city or a town or a farm and he'll ask the dwellers or the owners of that farm, do you believe in me? So they say yes. So he'll turn their dead farms will become very productive, very fruitful. All the plants and all the vegetables and all the fruits will come out. And not only that, he'll even command the gold that's hidden in the ground to come out. So the people say, this is our true Lord. Look what he done to us. And then he'll go to a farm or a town or a village that belongs to Muslims and believers. So he says to them, do you believe in me? So they say, wallahi, you are the Dajjal that the Prophet ﷺ warned us from you. And Nabi Sallallahu says, every believer will read above his head or on his forehead, Afwan. They'll read above, uh, on his forehead. Kafir, Kafara, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, disbeliever. Wallahi, you are the Dajjal. That the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam warned us off. And we could see on your forehead, Kafir, disbeliever. So he says to them, believe in me. So they say, Allah, Allah will never believe in you. You're a liar. So what does he do? He'll command their farms and their crops to die. So they'll live in poverty. They will live in famine, no fruits, no water, no vegetables, because he commanded their lands to die. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, by Allah, after he was asked, what do they eat and drink these people? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, their food and their water will be, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. That's their food and that's their water at that time. No burgers, no chicken, no fruits, no shawarma, no curry. What's their food? They've got no vegetables, they've got no water, they've got no fruit. Everything is dead because the Dajjal commanded their farms to die. So what do they eat, O Messenger of Allah? So Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, their food will be the tasbih, subhanallah. Wa tahleel, la ilaha illallah. Wa tahmeed, alhamdulillah. Wa takbir, Allahu Akbar. Look at these powers. Then 
while the Dajjal is traveling through the towns and cities. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, he'll enter every town and he'll enter every city except two. Mecca and Medina. Every time he attempts to enter Mecca or Medina, there is a soldier from the angel standing there protecting these two cities. Every time that the Dajjal attempts or tries to enter Mecca and Medina, there's a soldier from the angel standing there, ready to fight. So the Dajjal backs off. But every other town and every other city he'll enter. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says, while the Dajjal is marching and entering every city and town and village with his followers, one of the believing young men will hear about him coming to his city or to his village. So this young believing man will decide to go out and confront the Dajjal. So he stands in front of the Dajjal in front of his followers. And he says, by Allah, you are the Dajjal. You are the Dajjal of the Prophet ﷺ warned us off. I could see on your forehead, kafir, disbeliever. By Allah, you are not Lord. You are not Prophet. You are a deceiver. You are a liar. You are a hypocrite. You are a disbeliever. So the Dajjal will get angry. Especially he's been told off or he's been disgraced and despised in front of his followers. So what does he do? The Dajjal will chop this young believing man into two pieces with his sword. So with his sword, he chops him into two pieces. He kills him. And then he starts to walk between his two split body. He starts to walk in between, laughing. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi describes it. So the Dajjal will chop him into two pieces, and then he starts to walk in between those two pieces, laughing and making a loud laughing sound. And then he calls upon him to come back alive. So he comes back alive in front of all his followers. Look at this fitna. Look at this test. The Dajjal will chop him into two pieces and then the Dajjal will bring him back alive in front of and the presence of all his followers. So when they see that, they say that the Dajjal is our Lord, that the Dajjal is our Lord, that the Dajjal is our Lord. But this believing young man, when he comes back alive, he says, By Allah, I only increased Iman that you are the Dajjal. I only increased Iman. That you are the Dajjal. So the Dajjal will grab him and cast him into his fire. But in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says, his fire is paradise. Fitna. Fitna. Big fitna. What type of iman do you have right now? Ask yourself, if the Dajjal <coughs> comes out right now, what type of iman or how strong is your iman for you to stand against this fitna? Don't say to yourself, no, I'm going to be firm. I'm going to be strong. What firm, what strength are you talking about? When you see all this happening in front of you, killing someone, bringing them back alive, claiming that he brings your own mother and father who are dead back alive, Goes to the farms, if it's dead, he brings it back alive. If it's alive, he, bring, he, make, he makes it die. What, what, what iman do you have? That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us not to wish to be during those times. Don't to say, oh, I wish when he comes out, I'm going to be the one that's going to stand against him. Don't wish for that. What iman do you have to stand against him? And if it comes out, or if he comes out during your time, then depend on Allah. Because you have no one else to depend on except Allah. Fitna. Big fitna. A massive fitna. Nothing greater than the fitna of the Dajjal upon this nation. And when does the Dajjal come out? Allah A'lam. When does the Dajjal come out? 
Allah knows better. But don't wait for it and then look forward to it. How does the Dajjal die and he kills him? This is the second sign of the Day of Judgment. The second sign of the major signs of the Day of Judgment. And that's the return of Isa alayhi salam. The return of Isa alayhi salam is connected to the killing of a Dajjal. Because the one that will kill the Dajjal is Isa alayhi salam. But before I start with Isa alayhi salam, let me tell you something that took place during the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. A famous hadith called Tamim al-Dari. The hadith of Tamim al-Dari. Tamim al-Dari is one of the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. But before that he was a non-Muslim. And one day during one of the normal days of Medina in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he commanded one of the companions to call upon the people of Medina to attend the mosque during a time of no prayers. So everyone rushed into the mosque because they thought there's something important. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi wants to gather us for an important issue. It's not time for Salah. It's not time for any particular program or activity they know of. It's just randomly being called for everyone to start attending the mosque. So they came. Then in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, I did not call you to the masjid because of any particular prayer. But I called you because my friend Tamim al-Dari, who is a non-Muslim, alhamdulillah, now he embraced Islam, had experienced an experience. I want him to share this experience with you because his experience matches everything I told you. So now Tamim al-Dari had experienced an experience. He went and told that experience to the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa laughed and smiled. He says, that's what I've been telling my people. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered all the sahaba and the companions in his mosque. So Tamim al-Dari can stand up and tell them his story and his experience because it matches exactly what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have been telling the companions in the past. And what's the experience? Let Tamim mention his story. He says, I am a Christian man. I am a Christian man. Before this today, before this moment, before I met Muhammad, I was a Christian man. And I used to buy and sell. And I used to sail through the oceans. So the man is a sailor. He's got his own ship, or he's part of a big ship, and part of a big team. He says, few months ago, we went in the sea, sailing in the sea, to go from one place to another place, to buy and sell and so on. Until suddenly, while I was with 30 of us, he describes there was 30 men on that ship, the wind pushed the ship towards a direction that they couldn't control. And then he says, for over one month, battling between the strong waves and the strong wind, could not get to the direction they want. They want to go straight, but there's strong wind and strong waves that's pushing them towards a different direction. He says, we were one month stuck in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the sea. Could not go to the direction that we want because we are battling between the strength of the wave and the strength of the wind. Until the waves and the wind forced us on, a, on an island. So now they've been forced on an island. They've never been there before. He says, when we arrive to this island that we've never ever been there before, and this hadith sahih by the way, we were afraid to enter this island. There's 30 of us, but we're afraid to enter this island. What's on the island? To whom does this island belong to? We don't know. While we are covering our souls with our ship, he says, a strange being appeared. He describes that being 
okay, he describes that being as a very hairy beast. Very hairy beast. He says, we could not even know its top from its bottom. Its bottom from its top. It's not, it's not like there's a head or this feet. It's like a hairy, rounded beast. Never seen anything like that before. But that wasn't only the shocking thing is, this very hairy beast spoke. So they got scared. So she says, or he says, I am the Jassasa. And the word Jassasa in Arabic means spy. And then they spoke to her and said to it, what do you want from us? Who are you and what are you? So she replies, or it replies, I am the Jassasa, I'm the spy. And there is someone inside the monastery in this island that's anxious to hear from you. So can I take you to him? So Tamim al-Dari says, 30 of us gained up and followed this hairy beast towards this person or this being that's waiting and anxious to know and find out something from us. Tamim al-Dari says, when we arrived there, we saw the most gigantic person that we've ever seen before. His hands are chained to his neck. And his knees are chained to his ankles. So the bloke is chained up. This being or this person is chained up. So he spoke to us and he says, who are you? So we replied back, we said, we are people from the Arabs. We were sailing and by force the wind forced us into this island that we've never ever been before. And then suddenly we see this hairy beast that comes out to us and says that there's someone waiting for us in the monastery that's eager and anxious to hear our news. So he asks him and he says, he starts to ask questions. He says, I have questions that I want to ask you, answer me and then I'll tell you who I am. He asked him, what do you know about Baysan? Baysan is a city in Palestine. So they say, they asked him, what do you want to know about Baysan? What do you want to know about that city in Palestine? So he says, I'm asking you about its palm trees and its trees and its farms. Is it fruitful? Is it known or is it dry? You know, is it a dry land? What is it? So they replied back to him and, he said, and they said, No, what we know about this city, Baysan in Palestine, they are asking about, is a very, very productive city with a lot of fruits, with a lot of palm trees, and with a lot of, uh, with a lot of vegetables. So he says, One day that city will have no fruits or vegetables. All its farms will be dead. And then he asked, what do you know about Buhayra Tabariya, the Sea of Galili? So they asked him, what do you want to know about the Sea of Galili? Which is the Lake of Galili is on the borders of Palestine, Jordan. He said, I'm asking about its water. Is it still full? So they replied back and they said, yes, it's full of water. That lake of Galilee or the Sea of Galilee, it's full of water. So he said, one day that sea will be dry with not even a drop of water. And then he asked about a fountain in Palestine. What do you know about this fountain in Zuhr, in Palestine, a city? So they asked him, what do you want to know about this fountain? He said, is the fountain still flowing? Does it still produce water? So they said yes. And the people of that city used that water to irrigate its far their farms. He says one day that water or that fountain will have not even a drop of water. And then he asks, and have you heard about a prophet that came out? So they said yes. 
We heard about an illiterate prophet that came out from amongst the Arabs. And now he's, he's gone to Yathrib, Medina. So he asked, and did the Arabs fight him? So these Arabs replied back and they said, yes, they fought him. And then he replied back and he said, and what did the Arabs do after they fought him? Did they follow him and obey him? So they said, some people did and others didn't. So he says, most of the people will follow him. And then he says, I am the Dajjal. And it's only moments away that these chains and shackles will be free for me to go. I'll be released from these chains and shackles. And I'll come out for 40 days. And I'll enter every city and every town except Mecca and Medina. Every time I try to enter those two cities, there's an angel there with his sword waiting for me. And then he says, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Tamim al-Dari mentioned his story to the Sahaba, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, by Allah, it's Taiba, Taiba, Taiba. He refers to the Medina. Taiba, another name for Medina, Taiba, where Allah will protect the city from the Dajjal. And then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I wanted you all to hear from this man what I've already told you before. So you could know I am the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah and everything that I've told you will match what he just mentioned to you. Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, by Allah, he is in the east. By Allah, he is in the east. By Allah, he is in the east. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed towards the east. Who is that? The Dajjal. A few days ago, there was a child that was born with one eye. You probably saw the YouTube clip on that. My phone, my SMSs, my emails was flooded <laughs> with this photo and this YouTube clip. Sheikh, do you think that's the Dajjal being born? After this hadith and what you've heard, what's the answer? The Dajjal is already created and he's born, Allahu A'lam from who? long time ago and he is on an island chained up his hands to his neck and his knees to his ankles for many centuries until the moment comes now a lot of people start to throw in their opinions are oh, is it in you know Bermuda triangle or is it this or is it in the white house in washington maybe in Washington White House, Allahu A'lam. But where is he? Allahu A'lam. No one knows. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed towards the east. And he says east. At the east. In one of the islands. In the middle of the sea. Towards the east. Where's the east? We know where the east. The east could be anywhere from China, Russia, even towards America. Because that's towards the east. If you want to look at the... You know, the, the world has been a circle or has been, you know, a round world. That all goes towards the east. But that's not the thing we should be always looking at. We should be preparing ourselves for that time. So from this hadith, it's very clear that the Dajjal is created already. And he exists. And some of the scholars say he's been there from the time of Adam. On the island. Chained up with chains and shackles. Until the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rules, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will free him and this man will come out and cause mischief and cause corruption and cause chaos and cause the worst of corruption ever existed on the surface of the earth. How do we protect ourselves from the Dajjal? In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, whoever memorizes the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf and the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, Allah will protect him from the Dajjal. In other hadith, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the whoever memorizes the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf will protect him from the Dajjal. The moment that the Dajjal comes to you, read those 10 verses upon him, he runs away. And that's some interpretation of the scholars. 
Also, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged to read Surah Al-Kahf every single Friday. One of the virtues of reading Surah Al-Kahf and one of the merits of reading Surah Al-Kahf every Friday, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, because it protects you from the Dajjal. But most importantly, have strong faith in La ilaha illallah. Because La ilaha illallah overpowers everyone and everything. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, There is no fitna upon any nation greater than the fitna of the Dajjal. And during his time, he told the Sahaba, If the Dajjal comes out while I'm amongst you, then you've got someone you could depend on after Allah, and that's me. But if the Dajjal comes out while I'm dead, then everyone depends on himself after depending on Allah. Ikhwani, my brothers and my sisters, what strength of Iman do you have right now to stand against this fitna? Ask yourself. The Dajjal could come out at any time, at any moment. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Me and the day of judgment came like this. And he describes our time to the day of judgment as the whole world began from Fajr to Maghrib. We, as the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu came after Asr. So what's left to Maghrib when already 14 centuries had already gone past? That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to always ask Allah and seek refuge in Allah from the Dajjal. It's even after every tashahud that you do in the salah. Allahumma inna a'udhu bika min nari jahannam. A'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahi wa mat. A'udhu bika min a'adhaab al-qabr. A'udhu bika min sharri fitnat al-masih al-dajjal. Wa Allah, I seek refuge in you from the hellfire and from the agony of, the, of death and from the worst of corruption and evilness of this world and the hereafter and from the evilness of the dajjal. Seek refuge in Allah from the Dajjal. How does the Dajjal die? This is our second topic, which I don't think we have time to talk about tonight, is the return of Isa. When Isa alayhi salam comes back, as one of the major signs of Allah Azza wa Jal, that Isa will return. Because Isa hasn't been killed, or Isa did not even taste natural death yet. Isa was not killed. He wasn't crucified. As they say, they've killed him and he's been crucified. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهِ لَهُمْ Allah says, they did not kill Isa. They did not crucify Isa. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made someone look like Isa. And the lookalike of Isa, the one that was killed. The lookalike of Isa is the one that was crucified. بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascended Isa to him. Isa did not die yet. Isa has not even tasted even the natural death. So Allah made the return of Isa as one of the major signs of the Day of Judgment. And not only that, but the ending of the Dajjal will be on the hands of our Prophet Isa alayhi salam. More about Isa alayhi salam and the return of Isa alayhi salam. And how does Isa alayhi salam in the Dajjal and then followed by Isa is the third major sign of the signs of the Day of Judgment which is the advent and the appearance of Gog, Magog, Ya'juj and Ma'juj we'll leave that insha'Allah I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who listen and hear act upon when they listen and hear Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk Oh, oh, oh.